All right, everybody, we have arrived at the finals of the 2015 Imperial Assault World Championship, the first world championship for this game. I am Zach. And I am Steven, and I am amazed at the uh, number of Royal Guards here on the board. It is a lot. On the left, we have Martin Hoffman running 4x4, four four, and on the right, we have North American champion Paul Heaver running 4x4, four four, also three-time, at this moment in time, X-Wing world champion Paul Heaver, basically he around. a legend. He gets See around. if he Martin can really make this the best weekend of his life. Martin having his own uh, titles as well. I believe you said he was the Swedish uh, national champion, right? Yeah, I believe so. And but but maybe from Germany. I think he hails from Germany. That's what we heard. I'm sure it'll get cleared up uh, later on because we do have an interview where you can learn all about uh, Martin. And, of course, if you want to learn about Paul, just Google his name. Just go anywhere. You can find out about him. Anywhere so, within a foot of X-Wing. Now, that said, both players run the 4x4, and the top 16 was littered with lists that were not the 4x4, yet none of them making it all the way to the finals. And we all let out a collective sigh that low, the 4x4, the standard, the vanilla list, indeed was the one that made it all the way through for both Martin and Paul. Yeah, and really quick, before we dive too far into this, I want to go over the uh, scenario. We have arrived at the Cantina, which is the one new map. Well, hello. Uh, since the, the update from the Twin Shadows box expansion, and it's this A scenario, drinks and dealings. A figure can interact with a contact for its player to gain two victory points. Limit once per group per round. So you'll see the three circular discs in the middle of the board. Each group can have one model activate each one of those. There are contacts hanging out in the canteen so to get now information wait just a minute. Now and we score are, points. Uh, so this, this scenario is essentially just you're sitting down and you get rewarded for having a drink. You are basically getting points for having information. And it's really cool because you have the Imperials both on Tatooine looking for the droids, I would suppose. That's uh, that's the tabletop I like to play right there. Yeah, and it's really it's an activation game, right? It's, it's very part of what makes the 4x4 so good, but this scenario is interesting because you're trading one of an act, one of your two activations on a model in a turn for two points. Yeah, to go really talk good. to the locals. But at the same time, you're not getting rid of opponent's units, you're not doing stun conditions, you're not... So it's really putting yourself in a position to both activate it and do something else now, besides just sit there. I like, as a, as a simple man, I like this scenario a lot. I, I think this is cool. This, this adds a strategic element to any game whenever you're having to make a trade-off of do I go aggro, do I plan for the future, and what's my strategy here, or can I afford to take a break for a second and just get the points? I mean, the number of great board games that use this very basic equation to create compelling play is staggering. Uh, do I get victory points now, or do I build things that will get them get me victory points later? And that's kind of similar to what these guys are doing, right? Do I take their units off the board and get my long-term advantage, or do I get these quick points while I can? And these guys are drinking up, man. Look at this, too. Already, we have some interactions going on. Yeah, and more I think and more. the way this map's set up, you're far enough away at the start that you can't really attack on the first turn, and unless you command really heavy to get in there. So what you see is them kind of positioning up a little bit and also scoring the points. Right. So that on the next turn, they have the choice of going to score points or actually interacting with opponent's models. So actually, this is really, you see both players doing it, and it's it's very smart. Uh, getting points, but also not allowing your opponent to threaten your models. And this is, I mean, is this like a 100% died in the wool mirror match? Are we, or are there little tweaks to these lists? I, I, don't... I think as far as the actual cards, uh, models they've brought, it's the exact same. Now, where Must the difference- Must be a good list. It is. It is. And I mean, it's like in uh, the, the main variation in, in big list archetypes in this game are typically in the command deck, which we don't know what each player is running. And, nice. and there probably are differences there, and we will see. And you don't know what they're going to have. That's where all the tricks come from. Otherwise, all the knowledge is, is on the right, board. Right there on the board. All those Imperial officers just hanging out back there on Paul's side, talking to each other. Yeah, and you know, this list really reminds me, for anybody that's followed X-Wing, of the TIE Swarm in the early days of X-Wing which was this list that won a lot of tournaments and it, it beat a lot of lists because it just plays the fundamentals. And it's mathematically good on defense and on offense, but I, I'm very excited about the return to Hoth and the rest of the stuff to come out because I think with time, I think the saboteurs even had a step on them in this, at least as good going into the cut. It was more of the cut than the 4x4. Four four. It Whoa. just didn't make it to the finals. Well, so. we know these guys are great players, and uh, a lot of times what the, the really good players take a lot of times will have an impact, of course, on what ends up in the finals, regardless of its relative strength. But I think we can't argue with the fact that the 4x4 is such a standard and high-quality list. 
it has been that from the very beginning of this game and will continue to be that. And I do like the comparison to the TIE Swarm because a lot of people can bring a TIE Swarm to a tournament. However, mm -hmm. you have to be able to move it, you have to be able to use it and activate it and know exactly what you're doing. So it's not a it's not a put it on the board and win the game kind of list. It just has all the tools that you need if you're able to use them correctly. Yeah, it just gives you a lot of options. Look at those, look at that uh, Royal Guard Tango line there. All right, looks like Paul is choosing to strike Martin's front front and center Royal Guard here. Probably right. hoping for a First stun. First blood. That's a pretty decent little uh, set of rolls there. And ooh, nice deflection coming in. Oh, Bodyguard wow. Bodyguard Buddy Buddy says extra block. Yeah, the extra block is actually really, really important there because otherwise Paul has enough damage to do one damage and stun. Yes. Stun being hyper relevant because he can't move and do something, so he wouldn't be able to use that model to score points or attack. Well, that's really important. It is very important. And there's a nice, a nice little tango up top for the, the terminal. Boy, we're just, we're just drawing lines to the scene here. This is essentially just kind of some trench warfare happening here. No stun there. Some damage. <laughs> Wouldn't have mattered, I guess. No surge can or roll the surge cancel when he doesn't need it. Paul getting some damage in. Couple here. damage, there it is. And sitting on top of that console, was, on, I, on the bar table. I really love Paul's positioning at the bottom of the board here, getting that terminal and also making it very hard for Martin to do anything about it because of all the stacked units there. It's it's a, one of the huge benefits of the right side of this map is that you can get to that terminal and your opponent typically struggles. So is he going to basically now, so we're looking at the combat side of this thing now. They, they farmed in the points early on, Paul getting a nice block there. Uh, and now they're they're fighting it out. Now they're playing playing the old Baxi Forcey, a little Red Rover here happening. Yeah, and I think you know what I was saying about the activations. Obviously, the dice rolls are going to be very important, but choosing to spend half your activation on getting the two points is going to be tough because yeah. if you're if you, mathematically you should be doing about the same amount of damage over the course of the game. Right. And so if your opponent can start removing your models, it's going to get really tight for you if, if you're not removing theirs. The snowball begins, and this is a classic tempo argument that's made across various games, uh, I would say almost all games, certainly competitive games, where you're basically trying to open up windows of time where you essentially get ahead. And a good roll can do that, a good maneuver can do that, a uh, surprise command card can do that, all sorts of things can happen. And that's what we're watching for here is basically who's going to break out of this one and get those extra two maybe just points, extra two points, extra four points, and still remain in the lead until this game's over. Yeah, unless we have some statistically lopsided dice throughout the whole game here, I would expect the finish of this game to be very tight. And there's a lot of blocks coming in for Martin. That's what the guards do. They do that, don't they? They are just thick. Lots just of health. thick. Rolling the black dice, getting the free black, the free block from uh, friendly guards. It's it's big. We call that synergy in the business. Also, check out Paul's block of officers hanging out in the background, ready to move in and command a unit at a moment's notice, but otherwise staying out of that fight. Yeah, man, what a what a way to present the officer, ready to move in and command another unit. Yeah, <laughs> sounds very very intimidating. You move. Ooh, not much there. So that's a, that's some pretty serious damage happening there. Four, four unanswered. That's the kind of stuff that that starts adding up, and pretty soon, Martin's going to find himself in the lead here. He's already already up on points. Yep, couple spent a couple extra activations, scoring the two points. We can tell because Paul hasn't gone to the notepad in a while. <laughs> here they come. The oldest form of bookkeeping. All right, so he's using an officer to command an officer. And one thing, too, about these two lists, particularly in this scenario, if you have units that are good at shooting, they're really good on this map because yeah. they can sit next to an, a, a contact, shoot, and activate the contact. Yeah, and get the inform the points. Yeah, but a lot of sense. these lists are not so good at that because rear guards don't have the range. Well, wouldn't you love to see this against, like, Sabs or something, right? Oh, yeah. That would have been a wild, wild time. Yeah, picture how different Martin's setup needs to be if he has eight Sabs across the board right yeah, there. Yeah, tough. Man, I don't know. That, that would just be an inherent disadvantage. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And I wonder, can an officer really command another officer? I mean, we know how management culture works. I think there'd be some toes stepped on. There's Somebody's some, getting, getting fired. A, a senior officer, senior vice officer. All right. All right, I'll buy it. Card didn't say it, but I'll buy it. All right, getting that officer in there on the contact, that's going to be a that's great positioning. Not only can the officer shoot if a line becomes open, but he can also command and activate the contact, which is going to allow 
the rogue guards to potentially attack and activate other contacts. It's a lot going on here, Zach. It is. It's a scramble. That's why I tend to stick to the card games. Too much to move. Too much I will to say, think about. I think Paul has committed an extra royal guard up top, whereas Martin has that. not. Totally nullified that role. Denied. I wouldn't be surprised either to see command cards play a huge role here, whether it's uh, double strike or whatever the card is when they're leaving the space, you get to hit them when they're moving. Yeah, the old sneak, sneak womp. Sneak womp, I think that's what it's called. The old su <laughs> surprise, uh, surprise hit. I forget what it's called. Parting blow. Slap I when you're not art. looking. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that's just command card that could be really good on either side. Mm, and Paul rolling in with four hits. Um, Martin returning the favor. Let's see it. Oh, he's, he's hitting an officer. That officer's cancel. gone. Two points and an activation off the board. All right. So Paul says, oh, yeah? Yep. And uh, command this. If you get a shot at an officer, I think you, you take it. And then Paul's going to protect his again. That's that's right. Yeah, secret, secret officers back in the back there. Man, I really would have loved to see saboteurs against either of these players right It would have been a map. complete disaster, Zach. You know it would have been a steamroll. I don't know if it's a steamroll. I just think it is a much different game. You just can't block up like they're doing right now. I mean, this is this is literally, this is a game of, uh, this is like Red Rover here. It's what it is. <laughs> Send somebody over. Send a rug over. They do right damage. Uh, they do some damage. They run back. It's just a little slap fight here. I really dig the formation you see on Paul's side of the board here. His, his officer protection and use here is strong. Is that going to be the thing that turns it? I don't know. I, I, it can. It sure can. He, d he does have an extra guard up top, which is going to make his offense in the cantina a little less, less impressive than Martin's. Oh. So his defense is on, on point. Blocky. Blocky. Show me the three. And there it is. Three blocks. How about that? It's a lot of blocks all at once. I haven't seen so many blocks since high school. <laughs> I don't even know where you're going with that. <laughs> Not going anywhere, Zach. We're Staying just waiting. right here. Ah, uh, so good. Man, this is this is really good. With such similar list, it's. Well, I would say it's hard to appreciate yep. the the nuance that's happening here for those of you that are not. Uh, but it up is to speed at it the is nuanced. Author. It is very. There are two different approaches here. It's like watching two watchmakers make the same watch. Do a little bit differently. Who's going like to do that. it first? The old watchmaker analogy. And three more blocks for the heaver. But to all of us on the outside, it's just the same watch. <laughs> just ticking along. Just ticking along, Zach. Expertly uh, designed. Precise. All right, Paul, clicking up. Another contact. Two more points. This is these an guys are, race, yeah, man. These guys are. These guys are. Man, these are the best contacts of all time. They really are. They, they are getting delivering. juiced up. Can you imagine you're sitting in a bar and it's just like 20 royal guards walk up and are like, "Let's buy you drinks for the rest of the game." <laughs> Forever. Forever. Buy another shot. Five hits. That's massive. It's a lot. With a white. And oh, no and block. That, that's that's there. That could be a thing. Cowered it up One for block. a single. That is another officer off of the board. Wow. Unless? No. Ah, uh, there it goes. Wow. That's big. So Martin is down two officers. That's two activations and four points. The activations, I think, being the most important element here. Obviously, the pass rule being instituted going into this tournament, huge help to the non 4 by 4 list. But even in this case, right, it, it means that Martin being down a couple officers isn't going to put him at a big disadvantage in the late game. Man, Paul's playing a total head game here with his models. Look at that. Look at those paint. It's like, I painted, what, three of them? He's got three officers painted or guards painted there. The rest of them remain primer gray or even just plastic gray. Yep. Is Sticker, that, stickers and all. What does that mean? You know, you, you roll up to this guy in a tournament. It's like, ah, oh, this guy's not an advanced player. Except for his, his Paul Heaver. His models are unpainted. <laughs> so there's no question. His, yeah, his badge says world champion his name like gets out times. There, yeah. His name gets out there. All right, we got command cards rolling in. It looks like a lightsaber deflection to me. That's what the art looks like. Paul, I think, making him re-roll. Well. Did not matter. Back to four and yeah, see ya. And Martin Ma happy about that one. 
Martin played a command card, uh, the one that removes the defense die of the opponent, so he basically, guar not guaranteed, He with an average roll he could get rid of that Royal Guard. So that's a big, big swing up top. Martin only committing two uh, Royal Guards, and now Paul's down to two up top. Uh, so he may actually be able to steal this yeah. from the, the commitment, where the commitment from Paul is higher, but he oh, might be able to get man. it. Oh man, that is a roll from downtown. Four damage, two surge. I think you mean one damage. Well, Thanks, he, Royal Guards. He's got, he's got the two surge, so you'll be able to add two and a stun. Beautiful. So that is a that's a pretty solid solid attack. Now the stun's not going to be hyper relevant because you're still going to be sitting there contesting that terminal. He's going to go de stun, and then he's still going to get to attack here. Throw them, throw them dice, boys. Nailed it. Nailed those surges. They love it. Surges are good. They love it. Surge man. is good. I want a surge right now. That old drink? Yeah, the green, man. Can you believe that? I think they, uh, I just saw, just like a couple days ago, they're trying to make a comeback. Why not? Have you seen that? Have you We're heard into about retro that? things I haven't, but if you see them, buy one, I'll drink it. Yeah, Surge. You remember that old, it was the old Speaking days. Speaking of Surge, that's three Surge, Woo! one on the red, Woo! which is a rare sighting. That old thing with sodas, they put like guarana in all of them. It was like this weird African herb. <laughs> and it was like, I mean, it'll get you jacked. And it did. Yeah, and then it was off the market real quick, so. Yeah. We'll College see. students, yeah, see where that in trouble with that. that All right, right we're contacting some more points going up on the Martin. This is this is a close game. Drink up, boys. This is this is close. Give I'm, me the information. All right, Martin committing a lot up top. I think he's going to try to double down and get rid of those officer or royal guards and s keep that terminal under lock and key. Well, that officer's going to go talk to somebody. Hey, you sure you don't know where those droids are? <laughs> you sure? Can really I? Sure? Maybe I can. Uh, Maybe I can be of assistance. Martin gonna also do the same two points there with his officer. That's so crazy, just to <laughs> spend in a an action to gain two points is strong. So tempting, in fact, that you do that. You just want to shoot the pressing. opponent. Yeah, it's like that old uh, that old experiment that was done with uh, mice and the pellets of you keep uh, pressing cocaine. Even when the food's yeah. not coming. You just keep pressing it. I'd like more, please. All right, two more points for Paul. And they're getting in striking distance, right? Like oh, they... man, look at us. Command card is played. Jump jets. We got jump jets, jump on, jets a royal guard. on a royal guard. He's flying around. Put a model anywhere within five spaces. Super relevant. You don't have the movement penalty going through models, and you also can't get parting blow played on you, which is the, the real victory there. Looks like he's, he's heading for Imperial Officer Town. Can yeah. you imagine how scary that would be? And that's a unique opportunity. Paul had an officer not next to any other models. So officer has cower, and they can reroll on defense as long as they're next to a friendly model. So Martin took a chance there. If that had been a dodge, that would have been not as great, but Incredible. I think it's a, a good play. Love it. Jump jets. Can you imagine? How terrifying would that be? Okay, when he's leaving the space next to the road guard, he's on this officer. He is going to party and blow. So he's going to stay in the same spot. And so we do have a parting blow here. Yeah. And so this Paul played a command card uh, and then tr attempted to move, and now Martin basically saying a uh, parting blow happening? When, when the model's moving, yes. So, well, here we go. Yep, and this is important because if, if Martin can get a... Oh, no, sir. Uh, that's, that's not great. Want. Three, all right. Oh, wait, he's rolling the wrong die. He rolled a black. He rolled a black. Oh. I don't, you, you tell me, Zach. I don't know what happened. I'm not. I'm not the person here. So he put a damage on his Royal Guard. And then that attack was potentially important because he could have stunned, which would have been good. I feel like the Royal Guards just want Surge so badly all of the time. They do. They. They in fact. They What's do. the big Surge he dies at the yellow? Is yellow. The yeah, they roll one red, red one yellow. Um, yellow has a lot of Surge, and then they usually run the command cards. We saw it earlier uh, to give. Adjacent models to officers focus. Man, these command cards are coming out like candy now. It's like a Pez dispenser here. So Paul plays another card. He looks like he's shooting at the, uh, doing something there to the Imperial officer. Yeah, it's the one that removes the, removes the die so you don't have a chance at a dodge. Uh, you have plus one from a guard, but that's not gonna do it. Paul has enough damage to kill. So two points and another officer off the board. Man, what a weird game we're playing here. So really it's just about killing your opponent's officers. It's certainly at this point seems to be the case that those officers are just getting popped. Well, I think 
the removal of activations of your opponent is obviously good, but that's more models they can't use to activate the two points. Absolutely. And you really just need enough models dead to be able to get the other points from the activations, from activating the contacts. So they're just easier, they're way easier targets to kill. You have to kill both Royal Guards to get the eight points from them. Way bigger investment. Man, look at, look at Paul here on the acceleration of points. Yep. Going all the way up. Man, 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 look at this. Yeah, this is close. It's starting, people are pressing the gas here. He's, you know, Paul has four models next from different groups next to a single contact. That's eight points in the next turn if Martin doesn't do something about it. We call it. that game. And it looks like Paul's going to have initiative next turn as well, unless we see a take initiative. So I've heard the most important command card. At the right time, it wins games. That seems important. Yeah. Paul launching his attack here. Three yeah. and two surge. Three damage, two surge. That's a nice roll for those guys. That's really good. Going to have one surge canceled from Martin and a block because he's next to a guard. That's still going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, and, and an annoyance, certainly. Damage right. goes on. Damage and a stun, it looks like. Martin checking it out. How can he get over the hump here? And you know, Martin also has four models next to a, a contact. So, this is going to be super close. Paul has initiative here. Paul has the initiative. This is coming down the wire. All right. Paul looks like he's going with the Royal Guard to attack up punch top. Punch the terminal. Attack skis. Gets the free block. And two more. All right, so Paul's going to have to spend the surge on damage, not on stun. And then I think Paul gains two points from his other Royal Guard there. Oh, we got command card shenanigans. What happened? Uh, he's removing all the conditions going into his activation, so he's not stunned anymore. Oh, no. Oh, and three blocks from Paul. But the surge still remains. All right, so I think he's taking one here. That is not what yeah, Martin, Martin not to see. happy about that roll there. Nope. Taking a second attack here. Two and a surge. Two blocks. So gonna be able to add two damage, which I don't think is enough to get it done. I think Martin. I don't know if Does he, he do it. Looks like that. He looks like he's getting him off the. No, nope, we're going to a five. five. Yeah, Woo! that's a bummer. Woo! Paul looking good here. All right, Paul coming to attack. Launching Probably another trying to attack. He really wants to stun that that royal guard because the royal guard's not in a position to attack. Ah, oh, two surge there. That's really good for Paul. And just going down the line. All right. More points for Paul here. Paul got rid of a, looks like another officer, the last officer. Maybe not, no? There's one officer left. Man, I- This is a close game, 36 I, to 32. I have since on it, like, I don't, I'm excited and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I, I'm totally at a loss. I just, at this point, I know that these guys are playing a game. There, there's like, there's a very obvious thing, and one of them is going to win that thing, and it has nothing to do with the points. It's if I can get this one unit of yours, yeah. or if you can get this one unit of mine, we know the activations work out where I will win the game, those kinds of things. Cowering with an officer and does not get the dodge. It's gonna be two points for Martin, and that's a really big deal. That's big. Man, look at this thing sprinting through. Ooh. Right down the line here. We are very close to the end of this game. What are these guys up to? All right, we got a little rules question happening here. Doing some math. We got everybody on it. Yeah, and the uh, cantina there, that's blue spaces. So the distance to the officer there is three instead of two. Ooh. So he's asking if he moves, can he punch, because it's two through the Royal Guard. Uh, but I'm not sure on that one. I think he has to move closer to the actual officer. We about to find out. Uh, so close. Two activations to just swipe it. 
Dang. Evaluating the board here. Yeah, and I think with that double attack, if Martin is able to remove that Royal Guard, I believe it's eight points, because I think it's it, it's a single Royal Guard left in that group. I can't I can't tell by the tokens. It, if you look at the one with five damage, it's only got one blue token on it. Yeah, so, so there he goes. So He's Paul's activating. Rally to unstun. He's going to move away, and parting blow from Martin. Martin's going to get attack here and take a chance at the game. Oh, no way. Let's see if he can do it. That's a really big deal. Oh, the parting Paul blow. Paul was out of there. He rallies, and then the parting right, blow. All right, he's got two That's surge. Three. That's three with two surge. Paul gets one surge, and a block that is the game. Martin is the world champion for Imperial Assault. No way. Wow, that was insane, Zach. Yeah, he really needed that parting blow there. Paul was about to run to Funky Town with that, <laughs> that Royal Guard. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. Straight from the horse's mouth, Paul did not run to Funky Town. and said, Martin Hoffman, the world champion of Imperial Assault. Thank you guys for watching. This content, of course, is made possible by sales from our store. So if you want to check that out, we've got command tokens over there that uh, any Imperial Assault player will love, as well as all the releases and, and more. So check our store out. Thank you guys for watching. And... Zach, you got anything else to say to find folks out there on the on the internet? Thanks for watching, and let's beat the 4x4 next year. All right, sounds good. See you guys.